Hello. Today, let's take a look on how we can manage our costs on AWS. So we have a new AWS account. Congratulations. So let's start using it. So before we start using it, let's try and see how we can manage the cost on AWS, right? So let's go to the console or the web page that is aws.amazon.com and let's start exploring some of the options. So one of the first thing that comes to mind is try and take a leverage or the opportunity of using some of the free tier services now that we have a new account. So if we go and we can try and look at pricing and we can go about using AWS free tier. There's three types of offers, like free, to free trials, 12 months free, and always free, right? So we have a new application that we're going to design. So we can try and use the cost as a design consideration, which is a very important consideration, in my opinion. So if you look at some of the free tier details, I will say, okay, there's some services which are on trial. So like if I look at it, SageMaker for first two months is free. And these this is, this is the limitation when we're trying to use it. Or like light sale for the first seven, 750 hours for the first three months is free. So those are some of the design considerations we could use in, in, in building or designing the application. Some services are going to be always free. So if you look at always free options and we can say, okay, DynamoDB for first, first 25 GP is free. So that's a great, great way to start and great way to use something that I use personally as well. And I'm yet to incur costs. I'll, I'll show you that in this video. So there's some of the other options, which is serverless option in compute, which is Lambda functions. It's free for 1 million requests a month. That's a great way to start using using uh, AWS services as well. And some services are going to be for the first 12 months now that you have a new account, they're going to be free. So uh, here it is going to be EC2 for the first 750 hours for a certain instance types are going to be free. So let's say, so 750 hours roughly comes down to almost a month of an instance free. So which is a great way to start running our application or, or server workloads, like let's say, it's a great way to start running infrastructure as code or config management code on, and, and running that and testing it. So that is a great way to start using some of that services. Like a Lambda function is something we discussed and then we want to use backend for that as an S3 service or S3 as the backend. So we can start leveraging that option of using 5 GB worth of data uh, in that storage for the first 12 months free. So some of these services can go hand in hand when we are trying to design our application. So that is something to be considered as well. So now we looked at all the free tier options. Let's take a look at what our cost looks like from the management console. So here we are, and we can we are on the management console, and we can go and take a look at billing service. So here we can see the billing dashboard, and you can see my cost, which is pretty much minuscule at this point because I do use uh, the EC2 service for the first 750 hours. For the 12 months free, I do, do take benefit of that. And some of the other services that I'm building right now rely on DynamoDB. So my, my usage is pretty much relies on the free tier cost. So now I am I, I'm personally using it and this is an account that is personally exposing itself to using free tier, right? So let's see how I can manage my usage and control the cost over there. So if I see free tier, I can see that, okay, this account is using DynamoDB, account is in, using S3, its account is using CloudWatch and some of the services and their usage. So these are all free tier services that I am currently using. And in that case, my month to date usage in this case for DynamoDB is roughly around 6% and the forecasted usage is 59.21%. This is not a production account. So the usage, the forecasted usage and the actual usage is not really in sync. It's not really an actively used account rather than a production account, I must say. So the forecast, the forecasts are sometimes off, most likely are off, but if it is a workload that has a predictable usage, then I think the forecast would be of very, very benefit, good benefit and of great use. So now we looked at my free tier usage and we say, okay, I'm going to hit it right at a certain point. I want to be ahead of myself and try and see if I can reduce my usage before I hit it. So we can go to billing preferences and we can click on free tier usage alerts. And we can click on this and we can put in our email address here and save those preferences. And once we do that, we can get an email alert for saying, okay, the free tier usage capacity is kind of getting, you're hitting the limits and it's approaching or it has exceeded. And then you can, you can manage your cost in a much better way. 
Now we took a look at the free tier options that are available and how to control the cost there. Now we want to manage our, our usage all in general as well. So let's take a look at some of the bills and see how we can deduce or, or, or understand what our usage is and how we can drill down and see what is what service is actually costing us and which is giving us more, which is, which is adding expenses. So we look at some of the bills. This is my, let's say the month of January. In this case, I had a 46 cents uh, charge. And what service did cost me that? I, so if I look at it, the EC2 had a 41 cents cost and there was a couple of taxes. So if you look at that, oh, okay. So the NAND gateway per instance hour is what is actually adding, adding the cost. So in this case, it has nine hours and I do run three NAND gateways here. So, okay. So I did run three NAND gateways for three hours. So that makes sense. So this is the cost for, for, for my usage. So this is how we can drill down and see what is our usage and what is our cost. So the other example would be we are, we are taking advantage of free tier here. So the DynamoDB cost has, is zero. And because our usage is much more limited and it's not, it is not hitting the free tier, free, free tier thresholds here. So now we can take a look at setting up our billing preferences and setting up our costs as well, right? So let's see how we can holistically try and manage our costs and try and see if we can, we can get alerted on that. So we can take a look at the budgets option here and we can try and create a budget. Let's create one right now. So in this case, we're going to say we want to add a budget so that, so that the cost is not, is, is not going out of hand. So let's say if we have a monthly cost budget, we can say the budgeted amount is hundred dollars and create a budget and I'd like to provide an email address here. Create a budget. So this is the budget. So now we want to get alerted on our budget usage. So let's do that. So the monthly cost budget. This is a budget that we recently created. So let's edit it. And as you can see the workflow here, you set your budget, which is what we did, configure the alerts, attach options and review it. So we have the budget created. So this is a monthly budget, recurring budget, and it is a fixed budget for $100 a month for all AWS services. And this, these are some of the pre-selected uh, options here. So I'm not going to touch those. So we go next. These are the alerts that come out of the box and we'll, let's review them. So in this case, the alert is for 85% threshold of the percentage of, the, of the, the budgeted amount and the actual amount, please send a notification to the email address I gave so that when I, when I am about to hit my threshold, I'm notified. So before I'm actually hitting the threshold, which is a great alert to have. Now I have overlooked that alert or I am, I'm oh, like, like moving ahead and letting that happen. So some of these alerts that are listed here that would come handy is like, okay, so there's another alert that says if the actual cost hits the 100% allocated amount, then alert me. So that is alert this email address that is listed here. So that's a, that's a great alert to start off and having. There are other options as well. You can set SNS alerts, chatbot alerts. So that's, that's more like an advanced topic. We can get into that in a future, future video. Some of the other alerts that we could be very, very beneficial would be to have a forecasted amount for for the threshold. Like some of the forecasts we saw for for free tier, they were they were gonna be there. We have set a set up a preference or set up an alert to notify us every time or any time we hit that threshold. So some of so that the same alert would be applied here for for the the uh, the entire account here, so which is a great a, a great thing to have as well. So now we hit next. And these are the alerts, and that's more of the review. Let me save it. So now we have created a budget. We have reviewed free tier options. We have reviewed how we can manage costs or see what what actually is costing us in our bills. We can go over setting up alerts for notifying us if we are hitting free tier free tier thresholds. We can see what is our free tier usage as well. Some of these actions that we listed here is like, okay, we want to create a, create a budget and create notifications or threshold for a budget are better done using infrastructure as code. 
In this case, my preferred tool of choice would be Terraform and I would run a Terraform uh, uh, resource to manage that. Right? And this, this is a very simplistic example when it comes to Terraform, so I'm not gonna put out a, a separate uh, file on which I'm gonna put out for other videos for, for on, on my GitHub repos and add a link to the description. Over here, I'm just gonna go over the example listed on their website and I'll put a link to that. So here we have setting up an AWS budget, which is what the last action we did. So this would be the way to do it. We use the AWS provider. Uh, there's another video that probably came out or is coming out depending on when you watch this, where we'll go over the Terraform, uh, what Terraform is and how to set it up. So please go and look out for that. So in this case, we are gonna use the Terraform AWS provider and we're gonna start using the budget, uh, budget resource that we have listed here. In this example, we have a name, the budget type, and limit amount. These are the options that are listed here. And the time period is one of the things that are listed for 20, 2087. So we wanna keep running it until, until we don't wanna run it, which is a very long period of time anyway. So, so other than that, some of the things that we did on the console was to have a monthly budget. And we have an amount of $100 in USD, which we can change here in this case. Some of the other things that we list did there, which come out of by default is cost filter over here that we see. So if we don't apply it, all the costs, uh, the dedicated amount of costs would be applied to all services. So in this case, we are gonna apply the specific cost to EC2. So, and this is the way to do that using Terraform. Some of the other things that we did was to add a notification for our cost when it hits a certain threshold. So we saw one alert for 85%, and another alert for 100% forecasted, and another alert for 100% actual cost, right? So we'll add three notifications like that to send it to a certain email address. And that way we can try and replicate everything that we did on the console onto using infrastructure as code services. There are some more uh, other options that we saw on the console. Uh, one of them was setting, setting a, sending a SNS notification. So some of those options are available here as well. And we can try and look at the documentation to find how we can apply those. So notification, the budget notifications that we can see, and we can see the other options as well, which in this case, subscriber SNS topic, topic ARN. So this would be the way to set up an SNS notification as against to sending email address, which is which we saw in that example. So I hope this video was helpful to you and please come back for more videos like these. And if you liked it, please uh, like the video. That helps a lot. And subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified for get notified for more videos like these. Thank you so much for watching.